Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 21st of January 2019 and the time has just gone 9.45 GMT. Uh, we've had a bit of a slow start in Europe today. Uh, the FTSE is largely unchanged, uh, whereas mainland Europe has given back some of Friday's monster gains. Um, there's a bit of a sense uh, that things are going to be quiet um, in Europe today as US markets are closed, as it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day over in the US, so therefore the US markets uh, will not be open. So we suspect low volatility and relatively low trading volumes here in Europe. As I mentioned, uh, some of the European markets have given back some of the gains in light of the major rally that we saw on the back on Friday. Um, we can't talk about today's moves without putting up the contracts what we saw on Friday. Uh, essentially, US-China uh, trade optimism is fairly high. Uh, China came out um, later Friday, Friday afternoon, um, UK time, stating that they're looking to kind of eliminate the trade deficit or the trade uh, differences between the two countries. And China, one of the things that they've allegedly put forward was a six-year uh, import in, uh, a, a pledge to import to, in, to import world U.S. goods over the next six years. That led to a quite a large rally on Friday, and we're seeing some of that rally being handed back in light of the underwhelming economic indicators um, that we saw out of China overnight. Um, the GDP figures showed that the Chinese economy grew by 6.6% in 2018. Its lowest annual growth rate in 28 years. Uh, we also had another, another, a number of other indicators out of China. Uh, the retail sales came in in line with expectations. The industrial production was slightly above expectations, but the fixed asset investment was below expectations. <clears throat> so the numbers itself were okay, but the, the GDP figures just underlines that China is slowing down. And traders believe that if the Chinese economy is slowing down, it makes them more likely. Uh, to actually want to do a deal with the US in relation to trade. So we have seen in mainland Europe some of the gains in the equity markets being handed back. It's also worth pointing out, uh, we heard from John Williams of the Federal Reserve on Friday. He said the interest rates in the US are near enough the, near enough the neutral rate. So once again, reiterating um, the kind of the Fed's line that there may be not going to be pressing ahead uh, with tightening of monetary policy in, you know, in 2019. So... That's also an element um, as well. Um, to be honest, it's been a fairly quiet day in terms of economic uh, updates here on Monday. So let's just take a look now. Uh, I'll begin by taking a look now at the, the week ahead. We can see here uh, the week ahead article can be found on our platform. <clears throat> if you go to the cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you'll find it. Looking ahead to tomorrow, um, we have the Davos World Economic Forum. Uh, taking place. That's going to provide a lot of financial news, but probably won't actually move the financial markets a whole lot. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, UK unemployment and earnings. That's going to be a big one to watch out for. Excuse me. Uh, we have the Bank of Japan interest rate decision on Wednesday. On Wednesday we have fourth quarter uh, figures from Ford over in the US. On Thursday we also have the flash PMI updates. From France and Germany, and bearing in mind the two large economies in the eurozone having gone through kind of an economic uh, cooling uh, in, in recent weeks and months, so these figures could give us an indication of, of how what, what state uh, the two large economies in the eurozone are in. That will feed in to the European Central Bank, the European Central Bank ECB rate decision on Thursday. Uh, we have a trading update from Restaurant Group listed here in London on Thursday, and also on Thursday. We have second quarter figures from Microsoft. Uh, I'll take a look now at some of the major markets and see how they're holding up. S starting off with the FTSE 100. So the market's been in a very obvious downward trend uh, since August. And even though it attempted to kind of break 7,000 last week and on Friday, it didn't quite get there. And ultimately, we're still in the wider downward trend. And while we remain below the 7,000 mark, it's likely we could see the wider downward trend continue and if you do look to push lower from here we could be looking heading back towards the 6800 area here and a, below, a move below that might bring 6600 into play and below that we could be looking at retesting 
that is then below 6,536. Uh, but if you do manage to hold on to the gains that has been made since last, since late December, and if you do not push on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards the 7,200 or 7,220 region. This price action here, and that's that's on the condition if you do manage to hold above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes to play at 68.90, or even if you just hold above uh, 6,800, 6, we could see the market push on higher from here. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany. Similar situation whereby the German market has been in a downward trend for, for many months. It's a staged a decent bounce back from late December, uh, but today the market is lower uh, as the market has handed back some of the gains uh, that have been made um, uh, on, on Friday. We're currently above the kind of psychologically important 11,000 mark, and if we do manage to hold above 11,000, 11, we could look at pressing on higher from here. And if we do look to press on higher from here, uh, the first area to keep an eye out for would be to get a Friday's high in around the 11,250, 260 region. And if we press on higher from there, uh, keep an eye out for this the, uh, trend line here, which comes into play from the uh, the trend line re resistance from the, the highs of June to the highs of July and also through September. And that will come into play in around the 11,600 region. Um, but if the market does manage to turn over on itself, and bear in mind we've had a, a classic example of a downward trend since July, if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, we could have been looking at heading back down below 11,000, and a move below 11,000 might bring the 10,800 price region into play, and the move below that might see us back down towards 10,400, and a move below that could bring us down to 10,277. Take a look now at what's going on on the S&P 500 in the US. If we scroll out and if we draw a trend line between the lows of February 2016 and the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line along here. And we can see that this trend line was uh, respected on a number of occasions. It um, we had fairly decent trend line support back in October and November, uh, but we can then see the market traded below, traded kind of in around the trend line below it and above it in December, uh, but then was then once, once, once it went back below it, it was firmly lower. And now we've managed to push on higher here, stage a very decent recovery since late December, but we ran into resistance at the trend line and we're still uh, effectively just pretty much right on that trend line at the moment. So. If you do look to push on higher from here and we get a decent break north of that trend line and we manage to close above it on a daily basis, that would suggest that we are heading higher from here. And if you do move above that area and if you do head above 2,700, then keep an eye out for this red line here, uh, the 200 moving average, which, which would come into play at 2,744. And a move below that, beyond that, might take us up towards the 2,800 region. If the market can't get above the trend line and it looks to kind of turn turn over and, and turn lower again, we may see support come into play in around the 2,600 area, or perhaps uh, back down towards the 2,532 region. Uh, and below that, we could be again heading back towards the late December, the late early January of uh, 2,438. It's a similar, similar-ish situation on the uh, the Dow Jones, the other major U.S. index. If you draw a trend line between the lows of January, Fe February 2018, and April 2018, and May 2018, you get this trend line along here. Now it isn't. We can see a number of occasions that the market traded below it um, in October and also in November, but the, the market on a few occasions was kind of. So a lot of consolidation in around uh, around it and a lot of price action in around it. But nonetheless, the market traded firmly below firmly below it in uh, late December and then managed to push on higher. And once again, we can see the market has run into resistance at that old trend line. So if that trend line uh, is taken out, we could be looking heading up towards the 30 moving average, which coincides in around the 25,000 region. And if you go beyond that, 
we're going to be looking at heading towards the um, the early December high of in of just north of twenty six thousand. Um, 700 sorry 26,075 in around that area there um, Dow theory this, um, tells us that the averages must confirm each other so if the Dow Jones can get above its trend line um, all, tre all, all trend line resistance and so does the S&P 500 it makes it like likely more likely that both markets will keep moving higher uh, if both markets run into resistance at their respective trend lines and start to turn lower, it makes it more, more likely that both markets will continue to move lower. If one breaks above its trend line where the other doesn't fail to break above its, its trend line resistance, that's a bit that leads a bit that that would suggest the markets are a bit indecisive or you you you'll be you wouldn't be as confident in in the in the move in, in, in either uh, in either move. So so essentially, what you need to see is both markets moving in the, the same direction. Um, if the, the Dow Jones fails to get back above uh, the trend line resistance, we could see support come back into play in around the 24,000 region here. And if we go below that, we could be looking at it back down towards this area here at 22,587. Taking a look at the commodities market now, starting off at gold. So the gold markets had a really good run since mid-October and then particularly since mid-November. Uh, we hit, hit levels uh, in, in uh, not too long ago. We're, we're hit, reaching levels not seen since June, mid-June 2018. So um, fairly, fairly solid multi-month highs for the gold market. But as you can see here, the market always shied away from the 1300 level. So the market has managed to kind of pull back a bit. Um, it's still in, in its wider upward trend, uh, but if you do look to kind of push on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 1265 or perhaps even down as low as uh, this area here, um, this region here in around the 1250 region. But as I said, the wider upward trend is still very much intact. If you do look to push on higher from here, and if you do take out 1300, the next area we could be looking at testing is this area here at 13.26. Taking a look now at what's going on on the oil market, starting off at Brent. So oil obviously had a major sell-off um, between early October and mid-December, mid to late December. Uh, I see here from late December, the oil market has made a fairly decent recovery. It's bounced back. It's pulled back some of its gains. It's gotten back above the... 50-day moving average, this blue line here, but we would need to be taken out the, the the highs of early December before we become more confident that the that this this rally and this bounce back is going to continue. So, if you do look to press on higher, keep an eye out for 63 spot 35, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking at a back up towards this area here um, at 68 spot 36. And if you go beyond that, the next big area to keep an eye out for will be the psychologically important 70 bucks per barrel. But at the same time, we can't really ignore the fact that the market has been had a major sell-off between uh, between early October and late December. So if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, we could be looking at back towards this area here at 57 spot 50, and the move below that could bring us back down towards the 50 bucks per, per barrel region. Take a look now at WTI. This is a very similar looking chart on WTI, whereby the market had a major sell off between October and late December. The market has been pushing higher since late December, and if we look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting uh, the, the early December highs of 50, 54 spot 14. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards the 58, 58 10 region, and a move beyond that would then bring the Psychology important 60 bucks per barrel into play uh, If the market does manage to drift lower again keeping in mind It's been a very much a wider downward trend for a number of months We could find support coming to play in a 50 bucks per barrel and a move below 50 bucks per barrel could bring us back down towards uh, the early January lows of 44 spot 20 and a move below that could take us back down towards the 41 spot 76 region Take a look now what's going on on the currency markets, euro versus the US dollar. So broadly speaking, since about mid-November, 
the euro has been pushing higher against the, uh, the US dollar, even though we have seen a very decent correction in the last few days. And if you draw a line between a trend line between the lows of mid-November and the lows of late December, we get this trend line here. So support may come into play in around the one spot 1330 region. If you do, if you do look to move lower from here, uh, and a break below that could take us back down towards 113. And a break below 113 could take us back down towards one spot 1216. But as I was saying, we've seen a few a series of higher lows and a few higher highs recently uh, on the euro dollar. So broader trend is to the upside. So if we do look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the recent high of one spot 1570. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking ahead towards the 116 region. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a look now at pound dollar. Similar situation whereby the pound versus US dollar have broadly been moving higher um, or since basically for the last say month or so, since uh, mid December. So with the exception of this candle here, which happened on the night of the kind of the kind of the flash crash on the currency markets, the pound dollar has been pushing higher for about a month. Uh, we have seen a bit of a sell-off in the last couple of sessions, but if the wider uh, if the trend over the last month continues. We could be looking at retesting the 130 region and a break beyond 130 could, could take us up towards one spot 31 70, 74. Uh, and if the, but if the market does manage to drift lower, support may come into play from this blue line here at the 50 moving average at one spot 27.55. Like I was saying, keep in mind US markets are closed today, so I expect volatility and volumes, trading volumes for today to be fairly quiet, but I'd say I would imagine that it would be kind of business as usual um, tomorrow from, from tomorrow onwards. So I would imagine uh, the, the, the disappointing or the underwhelming Chinese figures that we saw overnight, we, we'll probably see the real impact of those t um, st uh, tomorrow tomorrow uh, going forward. Uh, just before I go, uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.